I came up with the name Impact Lures when my buddy and I were fishing one day. I had told him how much this lure making thing had such an impact on me. And he said, why don't you call it Impact Lures? And that's what we call it. My name is Ernie de Blasi, and my craft is handmade wooden fishing lures. Impact Lures was based on a simple concept to make quality baits in the old American style. Today we're in my wood shop in Boynton Beach, Florida, just south of Palm Beach. This is where everything happens from start to finish. Every single lure is made by me, handmade one at a time. It's a 17 step process. The first step is picking out the right type of wood. Every different type of wood moves differently. Some woods like oak that are more dense will sink and they will move more sluggishly in the water, where lighter woods like pine or cedar will actually float higher on the top of the water and move quicker. My father was the first person to take me fishing. I was about 12 years old. I got into woodworking spending some of the summer times with my uncle, who's a master cabinet maker. I used to help sweep his shop, and he would teach me some of the small, finer points of woodwork. I was just completely fascinated with the process and how everything went together. From that point on, I had gotten my first table saw. I just worked on it more and more, kind of learned some of the skills of woodworking and how things were laminated and put together. I started making my own fishing lures when I was fishing for bluefish, and I was going through a tremendous amount of lures that I had store-bought. Bluefish have very sharp teeth, and they can take out a lure within a couple bites. They break the hooks off them, they can put holes in them. So I went home, I took a broomstick, I spray painted it, and I cast it out, and I caught just as many bluefish on the broomstick as I did on the store-bought lure. What I found with wooden lures is you can't sink them. Even if you scratch them, poke them, drill a hole in them, they will not sink. So the next day I said, I can refine this broomstick. I can make it more of a fish shape. I can make it a better color. I can make it more durable. I can put better hooks on it. That was 10 years ago. Over the years, I kind of refined the, the craft for myself by reading on blogs, watching videos of different people, experimenting with myself and seeing how the lure actually moved in the water and, of course, how many fish they caught. It took me four to five years to actually perfect the lure and how I wanted it to move and catch fish the way I wanted it to. Facebook was a big proponent to me getting started because the more fish I posted online and me catching, the more people wanted to buy them. And that's what kind of spurred me into selling them across the country and across the world. I make predominantly topwater lures, poppers, walkers, propeller baits. Sometimes I'll make sinking baits as well or suspending lures. The benefit to making each one by hand is they can be individually inspected by me and tuned to that specific type of fishing. At this point, I've made almost about 4,000 fishing lures. Sometimes I'll make 12 a week, sometimes I'll make 50 a week, just depending on how many orders come in. Some days it can seem like a job, but I always like making topwater lures. The lure spinner I actually made from scratch, it rotates the lures really slow so the epoxy will actually have a rounded, completely symmetrical finish when it's dry. They're almost like mini works of art. Some people say when they get them that they want to hang them on the wall and not ruin them by fishing them. Right now, I like the aspect of a small company and making lures one at a time for people. I really don't have any aspirations to mass produce. I like making each individual lure by hand. It's crazy to think how much this company has grown in the past 10 years after casting out that first broomstick. I never thought that it would grow to this point to where I would be selling so many lures around the world. For anybody starting a small business, my word of advice would be stay persistent. If you believe in what you do, you can make it happen.